Hello, this video is about a big decision I've made to purchase a 2023 Basscat Caracal sight unseen. Yeah, I know it's crazy, but bear with me. Hello, I'm Joe Michaels, the owner of Fishpoint, and this is our media channel. Welcome. First, let's do a little history. My first boat I bought was in 1985 or something like that. It was a very used um, Ranger. Uh, it cost me $5,000. I think I overpaid for it because it had a lot of problems, right? a lot of electrical problems. And I finally just threw up my hands and I said, I, I can't take this anymore. It doesn't work right. The next boat I bought was a Stratus a 181 Pro. It was an 18 foot something boat. I had a 175 Evernoon on it. I love that boat. Um, it was perfect for my budget, okay? And uh, it had a pretty nice deck layout. It was, it was pretty uh, classic design. The only thing about that boat, it was incredibly wet. I mean, a little ripple would cause water to come flying over the bow as you, as you take off. So it was an incredibly wet boat, but who cares? I was 20 something years old, what does it matter, right? Follow-up boat, because um, uh, I wanted to join uh, a local uh, dealership team, it was an a Astro 18-foot boat, 1850 or something, I think they called it. Oh, it had a 150 uh, Merc on it, pretty nice boat. Um, it was a black boat. And uh, it turns out that I, I don't like black in Arizona. And you'll, you'll understand as I move forward here and talk about the, the Caracal. Um, and, in, and lastly, in 2004, I bought, well, in 2003, I bought a 2004 um, Triton TR20X, I believe. And it had a one, uh, 225 a Mercury on it. I love that boat. Um, well designed, well laid out. Uh, everything about it was, was, was top notch. I kept good care of it. I had it for 10 years. I sort of got out of fishing, I sold it. And I was out of fishing for eight years and now I'm back into it and I wanted a new boat. So I decided to keep an open mind. What boat should I get? What's, what's changed in all these years, right? So I started looking at every boat I could. I looked at Nitros, I looked at Camus, I looked at uh, Phoenix and I looked at uh, um, uh, Skeeter. I was gonna look at everything. One of the challenges I had was I had to fit it in my garage. So even though I wanted a 20-foot boat again, I love, I think it's a great size, I could not um, fit that in my garage without making some length modifications. I just didn't want to do that. So I had to start looking for a 19-foot boat that fit my needs. I'm not sure when I ran across the Basscat. Um, we don't have a Basscat dealer here in Phoenix at the time I recorded this, nor at the time I was, I was searching. So. Um, all I can say is that I was on the internet and I saw the boat and was the 19 footer and I saw the incredibly wide deck and I thought to myself that's perfect if my boat happens to be needs to be a little shorter that's you know let's have it be big and wide so I can put two people up in the front I love fishing um, team tournaments I love fishing um, pro-am draws where you're, you team up in, in your on the same team I love that kind of fishing so um, that intrigued me. The next thing I saw was the deck layout of the Caracal. Much different than the traditional rod locker on each side and then this giant opening, you know, crazy lid where you kept all your tackle. I, I, I just don't understand why people like that. It's like you're constantly in and out of that center giant lo locker and it's like I want to be, point is, I want to be sitting on the rod locker and then I want to open up the side ones and grab my tackle so I can sit there and tie on you know that that's what I want to do so the Caracal had that design by the way other bass cats have both they have that sort of the rod locker down the middle and they sort of have the other traditional with their two rod lockers and you your your your, your baits go in the um, you know compartments so but I like the Caracal at least what it looks like um, on other people's other people's uh, reviews another important thing um, is that Ken Smith did a whole series on bass boats. Now he didn't review the Caracal, but he ended up talking to Rick Pierce at Basscat, the owner or the CEO, I should say. Uh, those interviews are unbelievably valuable because when, when a guy talks about a bolt that he had specially designed that he wanted to help keep the boats better, together better, how they use the best raisins, how they design their own trailers. 
That kind of stuff matters to people like when, when they're searching for quality. And I was definitely searching for quality, okay? I know I'm gonna pay a little bit more with this Bass Cat, but I've learned through the years, if I pay for quality, it returns, that's a value that, I'm, that returns to me over time. So that was one of my bets. Um, then I thought to myself, well, let's go ahead and let's buy a one-year-old Caracal or two-year-olds, you know, that, that's a s smart move. But one of the challenges I had is living in Arizona, I wanted a white boat, okay? Um, my um, uh, Triton was a white boat with, with red. Uh, the white is just easier to manage here in Arizona. It's not so hot to the touch, so I wanted a white boat. And apparently, white is sort of out of favor these days. Everybody's going for these darker boats, um, especially back east. Okay, cool. That's fine. Every, you know, everybody can do what they want. It's, it's a great, great uh, world that we have choices. But so I wanted a white boat. So I ended up deciding to order. So I'm ordering a new one. Um, it's taken about I don't about two months to get it, and, uh, and that's that's my next step. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave here uh, on a quick trip, and we're gonna drive to um, north uh, western New Mexico, San Juan Marine, to pick up my 1923 Bascat Caracal. So let's go. Well, I'm just heading out now to go to Flor Vista, New Mexico to pick up my 1920, uh, 2023 Bascat Caracal. I'm so excited, I, I can't even imagine, but it's going to take me at least six and a half hours to get there. Um, and just because there's no Bascat dealer in Arizona at this moment, so. I'm going for a little road trip. It should be exciting. I'm going to head up through Payson, go to Winslow, um, take the scenic route on the way up, and, uh, and just enjoy the scenery. And then along the way, I think I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about my decision to uh, buy the Basscat and you know drive all these hours just to get the boat that I want. Ask me, so what kind of bass boat are you getting? And I always say, well, I'm getting a bass cat, I'm getting a caracal, and they go, you know, what is that? And I say, well, it's a, it's a 19 and a half foot boat, um, and I reason I'm getting that size is because I have to fit it in my garage, and that's the thing that kicked off this whole sequence of events that I quite can't quite remember anymore, of why I've I selected the the bass cat caracal. It's funny because once I, I made a decision on selecting the caracal, uh, it, it's like I've been just focused on that and I, no matter what I looked at, it was just hard for me to change my mind. And that's just how I get. Once I make a decision, I focus on it and I, and I just move forward and, and work, work to, you know, accomplish the mission, uh, accomplish the goal, or in, in this case, it was, you know, to make a purchase of a, a bass cat and find it. There were two options for me, and one was driving to Southern California at six and a half hours, and one was driving up to New Mexico at six and a half hours. And, you know, weirdly, I decided to go to San Juan Marine in Flora Vista because it's a small town, and I, I, I want to support small town America. And I thought, well, if I'm going to drive six and a half hours, <laughs> it might as well be one that is a scenic drive. I haven't been to that part of the country in a number of years, and so. It's all, it's funny how people make decisions about things, right? And, you know, I think I got a fair price uh, on the boat, so I can't complain. It's going to be exciting to see it for the first time. As I've noted before, I have not been in a Basscat or a Caracal, nor have I seen uh, a Caracal in person or 
crawled around inside of one. So this is going to be interesting. I'm sure um, I'm going to be happy with my decision, but at the same time, I'm pretty sure there are going to be some things that are, are going to surprise me and catch me off guard and go, oh, well, you know, that's, that's a bummer. I am hoping that what I really want out of this boat, what I find interesting and very, very important and useful, will be the, the things that I think it should be. In other words, I want the big wide deck. You know, is it going to be as cool and as wide as I had hoped? Um, the layout of the deck, which is something that I'm going to talk about in detail once we get inside of it and do a review of it, is is it as good as I had hoped? Those are going to be the, the interesting questions that um, will will have to be answered. I've also decided to spend the money and get power poles, the eight foot, you know, automatic anchors. You know, talking with a good friend of mine, he, he says, man, Joe, just if you're gonna get a new boat, load it up for, for yourself and, you know, f so it's there so people can use it in the future. But for the short term in Arizona, you know, I don't know, like I certainly uh, fish, you know, bed fish in the spring so the power poles will be useful then, but where else will they be useful in, in Arizona? So, you know, I don't know. It, it could be very limited use for spending that kind of money. I do know that I'm going to use it for launching and, uh, you know, picking up my boat. I, I think being able to push a button and have them, you know, put, put the power poles down would be interesting. And also, on the occasion where I'm going to beach it up on the bank, I'll be able to use the power poles to hold me in place. Um, I'm also getting a Hamby's uh, guard underneath the uh, keel guard, I should say. So those, you know, those two combinations are going to allow me to, you know, put the boat up on shore if I need to. I don't know how often that will be, but there are times when that be the may be the case. So I don't know. That's that's that was a big question mark. Should I do that or should I just go ahead and uh, not have it? So we'll find out. And I think it'll take me a year or two to really either appreciate the fact that I I got them on my boat or it was just a you know waste of money and I use it once in a while and you know it's nice to have but geez really it's not very valuable but we'll, we'll find out another decision I made when I got this new Caracal is I decided to go with um, lithium batteries so I like the concept of having them last longer, so I think that's something that I think I'm going to enjoy. I've talked to other boaters and they, they love them. Now it changes the, the weight distribution in a, in a basket, and the basket is highly tuned to uh, basically batteries, lead acid batteries, right, or AGM batteries. So I'm not sure what I'll have to go through. To, get the top end out of my basket, but I, I think I'm going to be solid with the concept of, of getting lithiums. I'm getting a trolling motor. I'm, I'm going to get a Garmin trolling motor, and I'll talk about that in a second, but it's going to be 36 or 24, depending on if you have it hooked up as 24 volt or 36 volt. So my objective here is to get three 50 amp hour batteries so that I can either hook them up in 36 volts if I need it or 24 volt for two and then have a spare battery, not spare let's say, but maybe connect that to my electronics. So we'll see how that all plays out and if that's a smart thing to do. As I mentioned, I decided to go with Garmin. I'm getting two units, they're 12 inch Echo Map Ultras. One's going to be at the console, and one's going to be up at the front. And they're, of course, going to be attached uh, to transducers. One is going to be um, pushing out the out the back for side scan and down scanning. And then I'm going to have the Garmin Force trolley motor, brushless, very quiet, and it'll run in 24 or 36 volt. I think. I decided to go with Garmin. One is I was amazed at the quietness of the trolley motor. 
very, very quiet. And I was also very happy with how everything is integrated together. So that, to me, that's geeky. It's a geek in me, how all this, all this stuff easily integrates and works together. And they have a, an app uh, called Active Captain that I can use to upgrade all the software on the units and, and, and everything. So that, that's the geek in me that's going to come out. And I'm going to do a couple of videos on, on the Garmin and why I made the, the, the decision to do that. things about the Caracal is how deep the storage compartments are. Now, I don't know how this is going to play out because if you put in 3,700 size boxes in there and you end up having all this height that is not usable, you know, I'm not sure what good that's going to be, but that's going to be one of the things I'm going to have to find out how to utilize. I will be going over how I'm going to set up the boat, where I'm going to put my rods, where I'm going to put my tackle, and things like that. What's interesting, um, based on the added feature of getting the larger fuel tanks put in the back of the boat, is I have, or going to have, storage underneath the seat. So, you know, I've got some ideas what I'm going to use that for, and uh, combining that with all the rest of the storage, we're just going to find out how much storage this boat has and how how I'm going to organize it. That's really the key. I I'm going to have to you know get some special com containers of you know store things differently. But we'll 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 have we'll have some fun doing that. It'll be interesting and it'll take me time to one get organized the way I really want it and then certainly get the right type type of tackle boxes or containers and bags and all kinds of different stuff to organize the boat just the way I want to. With me is Billy Dutson, the owner of San Juan Marine here in, it's actually Flora Vista, Flora, New Mexico. Right? Flora yeah, Vista, yeah. New Mexico. Yeah, very nice. Billy, yep. first time I met you in person was today. Yes, sir. Um, I worked with Billy on buying my 23 Bascat Caracal over the phone through email because I live in Phoenix. There's no Batcast, Bat, Bascat dealer there and Billy's up here. I went for Billy because I love small town, even though I live in a big city, I grew up in a small town. Um, thank you for taking a few minutes for me. Yeah, you yeah. bet, man, I appreciate, appreciate everything, you appreciate bet. the business. So how long have you owned this business? I purchased the business in January of 2018. Okay. Um, yeah, I worked here for a couple years as a mechanic in the back, kind of part-time, and then kind of the, the position, the, it presented itself and it's we awesome. took advantage of it. So. I mean, that's how it works, it's awesome. And how long has this? How long has uh, San Juan been around? San Juan Marine was started in 1976, and then it actually moved to this location in 1980, 1978, um, and it's been here ever since. It was a one owner until I purchased it. It was a family that had it, so Incredible. it's been around for 40 some. I love now. entrepreneurs. So how's how, how did it? How's it going? How, Man, uh, business has been great. Obviously through COVID uh, and everything, it's been challenging, but it's been awesome. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, I wished I would have known a little bit, had a little bit more experience than I started. I'd probably do things a little bit differently, but you know, we all we can always look back and see it. But it's been great. That's I, mean, I know that's the way it is from a business owner too. I've had ups and downs, and hindsight is always twenty twenty. Yeah, but absolutely. you know, here you are. You're still here. That's right. Still plugging away. Yeah, we're still here five and a half years later. Yeah. I mean, we've grown from. I sold 18 boats my first year in business to, I think I sold 70 last Holy year. Holy cow. Of course, a lot of that has to do with COVID and but stuff too. You'll but you'll take it when it comes, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I've expanded my brands. And yeah. We started out with, I was just Skeeter, Bass Cat, and uh, some G3 pontoon boats. Okay. And now I offer 
couple different lines of pontoon what are boats. They? Yeah. Uh, I sell G3 pontoons, which is owned by Yamaha, South Bay's, uh, Bass Cat, Skeeter, and Phoenix, and then Bayliner and Crown line as well. Okay. And just recently, I took on the Centuriana Supreme line of tow boats. So very nice. Yeah. Uh, it's been it's been interesting learning about those and trying to transition from. You know, a guy that knows a lot about bass, bass. boats to, to now surf yeah. boats too. So well, that's, it'll be interesting. That's good. Yeah, that's that good. makes it. So, uh, bass cat. How long have you had bass cats then? We brought bass cat on in the summer of 2017 when I was just working here part time okay. as a mechanic, and then uh, as I purchased the business, we just rolled with it. We kept kept bass cat and skeeter. So yeah, we've been doing it for. Well, I'm headed to the dealer meeting after we get done with this meeting, and uh, the dealer meeting of 2017 is when we first carried them. So it'll be six years next weekend <laughs> awesome looking forward to the new surprises from bass cat as long as it's not a new caracal sts <laughs> my god i but think it, you're safe there know, but, we'll see, but, but nobody knows right until nobody knows i know but that's whatever it's okay I, i'm gonna love my boat i did a lot of research um and billy helped me uh w with the critical color selection and I, I, my colors are brilliant i love them you guys can decide what you like yeah. tell me about the bass cat and what am i gonna need to know um, you know, I think the most important thing about learning, uh, the bass cats have a distinct way of driving and, and riding, you know, they're, they're kind of the only boat that rides that way, okay. right? You need to spend some time, just seat time. And yeah. then the best thing I can tell you is just make small adjustments with your trim and your jack plate. Mm -hmm. I think the best way, the, how I learned how to do it was just, you know, some seat time and then making small adjustments and not being not being too quick to the trigger, right? Everybody likes to hop up on plane and trim yeah. it out and let her eat, and it just doesn't work out that way. If you if you're a little bit slow and just make small adjustments, you'll you'll learn exponentially faster than if you just go out there and just try to haul ass right. Great. So play. never had a hydraulic plate before. Yep. Where, where should I start? In every basket, I've owned seven right. baskets now. I think I've ridden in seven different baskets. Every one of them performs the best somewhere in that two to two and a half okay. on the gauge. Okay. Um, the Puma that we're leaned up on right now, I've been running for about the last six months. It runs the best right at two or maybe just under two. Okay. Um, I have a little bit under props, but I also run this thing at 6,000 yeah, foot elevation. High. So oh, yeah. we have a little bit of a horsepower performance issue. So oh, yeah. smaller prop helps it out. Um, and it just, this 21 pitch that I have on now just performs better if I if I just run the jack plate a little bit lower and don't really try to achieve those the high, high speeds, speeds well, exactly. which is hard at 6,500 feet, right? Exactly. Oh, uh, for me, yes, I'll want to get her going. Um, I'm hoping to hit low 70s, but uh, I'm not going to run it like that all the time. I really am not. I'm, but every time you want to, once in a while, you want to get on it and see what it can do. Um, one of the, uh, you said something to me about um, weight in a, in a bass cat. Uh-huh, sure. So all bass boats are really susceptible to weight weight placement mm -hmm. obviously you put the lithium batteries in your yeah. boat so that helps lighten lighten the the rear end so it helps get a little bit better hole shot, hole shot okay. um but it also makes the nose a little bit heavier yeah, yeah. right we don't have that counter effect yeah, yeah. so if we lighten up the back end and stack a bunch yeah. of tackle in the front now we got a really heavy front end and and it'll not want to lift the lift nose as much. much and get as much performance as you can right. out of it you know so it's just something to be mindful of okay um and something that you can always play with you know, right obviously you know put heavier tackle in the back mm -hmm. and put the lighter stuff in the front um i i, I my old 20 2004 triton I, I put all lead in the front but i might have to do some yeah. adjustments because i have lithiums which i'm happy everybody likes them so we'll see how that i'll i'll figure it out right yeah, i'll absolutely. be on the phone maybe if i need to yeah <laughs> absolutely give me a call i mean i've ran I actually spent a day in a Caracal mm -hmm. at the U.S. Open three or four years ago doing demo rides. Right. Um, I went over there and just helped Bass Cat out, sure. so I spent a day in the boat. Of course, that boat didn't have really anything in it. And I was, <laughs> right. We were able to run 73, 74 yeah, okay. if you were able to get out With there two guys in it? Or just, yeah, for two, with two guys. But not, yeah. yeah, good, good. Um, San Juan Marine, what, what part of the you know area do you serve tell, tell me about that. yeah so we're in the we're in the four corners area what they call the four corners area mm -hmm. so the only place in the country where four states touch right it's about yeah, yeah. 45 minutes here from so but mostly you know i grew up bass fishing and i know a lot of guys in the states so i service pretty much all in new mexico as far as some of the for bass cat anyways okay I've got a lot of friends that live all over the state and then southwest colorado mm -hmm. southern southeastern utah 
and uh, some of that Arizona. I lived down yeah. in Phoenix for a few years, and I got quite a few friends down there. Right. So yeah. I'm able to help out some of them. Previously, they had a basket dealer down there, so I didn't want to infringe on any territories or anything. But now that now that's wide open, gone, right? Now, that's yeah. how we found each other, I guess. Right. <laughs> so he, Billy has this uh, 23 Puma as a demo boat. So it's a beautiful color, too, blue blue and white. Perfect for Arizona, by the way. You also have a couple others in I stock, do. right? Yep. I've got a 2023 Cougar FTD um, in stock, and then I have a 2023 Pantera Classic as well. And the price points for those are? Uh, that Cougar's in the mid-90s, yeah. and uh, the Pantera Classic's like mid-60s. Okay, so that's a value boat, and that's mm -hmm. a great... 200 on that one? 200 horsepower so on the Classic. That's, sure. Yeah. Um, obviously, um, I worked with Billy, like I said, over the phone and email and drove all the way up here. Worth it. It was a beautiful drive. Uh, it's a very quaint little town, you know, coming from uh, Phoenix and Scottsdale. But I enjoyed it. Was, by the way, I was shocked at the that, that what, uh, 491? Uh -huh. It's like a two-laner. Yeah, yeah. They, they spent what some the time over It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's like a super highway. Basically, <laughs> folks, you can go from all the way from Phoenix right to here and be on a four-lane highway almost all the time. I came up through Payson. So I'm going to go home. I'm going to go across the, um, you know, the, the 40 and down 17. Yeah, but I can tell you, I was, it was smooth sailing the whole way. And so it's going to be easy to get my boat back there. And keep that in mind if you want to come up and talk to Billy and get yourself a basket or something. Um, right. Anyway, thank you for staying here on a Saturday yeah, and getting her ready for me. Well, I'm glad we were able to get it done. I know yeah. that we were, we were, Originally, we didn't know when it was going to get yeah, built, yeah. but they were able to get us a build slot and get it in there. I so. know that was incredible. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, happy for that. Good. So they're they're getting caught up too. Absolutely. Thank you very much. You bet. We'll Thank be you. In touch. Take Appreciate care. It. If you have any good questions or anything, just give me a call. We'll do. Awesome. When I saw the boat the first time, the uh, the color, the the purple and blue was was just stunning against that white. To me, it's a gorgeous looking boat. This deck is just really, really wide. Really hard to show how wide this deck is until I get up on it. Amazing. And then this step here I was concerned about, but fits my foot pretty good. You know, not not 100%, but I can go like that. You can step up here easily. Now, as I go up to the front, this position of this was, is interesting, and um, I'm not sure how I'm going to like it. I'm, I'm going to have to learn it, and or I'm going to slide this back, right? Open that up and slide, slide this back. The way the troll motor is placed, if you notice, it leaves room for um, your, your tr rod rods to lay right there. So that's really, I think that's an incredibly great design. It has all the storage, it has this center rod locker, which I think is one of the keys I'll show you in a minute, plus the storage. This is incredibly wide, wide deck, and that's one of the keys. This cockpit is awesome. I got the non-carpet stuff. I forget what it's called. I'll have to look it up. The seats are awesome. Here are the giant live walls and the bass cat. Uh, okay. Just, whoop. Just deep. Deep, deep, deep. It's hard to believe how deep those are. And these are tie-downs. I'm going to talk about this stuff later important that is to have those latches like that and not through the not through the middle of it like all the other latches and other boats how it keeps the everything cool it has an awesome non-boater rod locker which I'm gonna find out how easy that how useful it's gonna to be to, for people you can put four rods in there and then they can put five up here okay so my initial impression is the width of this deck is just exactly what I was looking for. I can easily put two people up there. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the excursion to Flora Vista, New Mexico to pick up my bass cat. 
I hope you enjoyed some of my musings on the way up, trying to figure out what I was going to see. And then, of course, the ultimately uh, the reveal and the walkthrough um, that I did the next day. It's just the start. My next move is to do a DMRVP review of the entire uh, Caracal and give you my impressions and give you why, in deeper thought, why I chose the Caracal. And so remember, please hit the subscribe button and the like button because it really helps as I develop my channel. Thank you. Hope to see you again.